And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some teamer ramp to start the day off today. That's right, we have a donation deck to play some Ilharg the Raise Borer. Can never get enough Ilharg in our uh, in our stream here. The Boar God. We've not not played enough of this card. So yeah, we just kind of have like the Simic Ramp shell with um, you know Risen Reef, Nissa, Leafkin Druid. You know, Hydroid Crisis, a Portal Grazer, that kind of stuff. But we got a pretty interesting top end. Instead of playing Cavalier of Thorns and um, a bunch of Agent of Treacheries, we have we still have one Agent of Treachery. Um, but then, yeah, we have Ilharg, we have Skargon Helkai, Ravager Worm. I do love some Ravager Worm. Probably my favorite animation on Arena. We got a couple Beanstalk Giants that they're up here, but really they're like three drops, you know, to help us ramp a little bit more. And then, an, and then a Forerunner and a Great Henge at the top end. Ilharg has some really cool synergies here. Putting in Ravager Worm is, of course, awesome with Ilharg. But putting in Agent of Treachery. You know, if you can attack with Ilharg, put in Agent of Treachery, you steal something. Um, as long as your Agent of Treachery doesn't die in combat, it'll be bounced back to your hand, and you can do that again. You can put in Skargon Hellkite attacking with the counter so that then you can automatically activate Skargon Hellkite. That's pretty um, pretty fun, too. And then, of course, you can put in End Raise for Runners um, and give your creatures plus two, plus two, and trample. The Vigilance at that point wouldn't matter, but still, you're giving your creatures plus two, plus two, and trample. So, yeah, pretty interesting little deck here. We've got 28 lands. We definitely want to be hitting our land drops. I like how we got six temples in here to help, so our lands can help us scry and everything. Um but uh, there we go. So we're going to go ahead and, and start with some teamer ramp today. So we're playing with a donation deck. We're playing a league like we always do. Play till we either win five or lose two, whatever happens first. Yeah, I'm definitely excited for Theros. I really liked Theros uh, before. I thought it was a really good set, the previous Theros set. And so, yeah, I'm excited for it again. Um, yeah, I... Um, I'm going to be playing the the Grixis Fires Kicker deck on Sunday. Decided to go, because it's just it's very similar to the Grixis Control in Historic that we played yesterday. I'm going to play that on Sunday. I'm going to play Grixis Control in Standard today. <clears throat> um, so, yeah. So, with, so, yeah. Kicker with... Fires of Invention is just amazing because you you can just play the spell for free and all you have to do is pay the kicker cost, and then you know you get the effect. So like like Fight with Fire has kicker with six. If you have six mana out, you pay play Fight with Fire for free and then you just pay you just tap your six lands and you get to kick a Fight with Fire. Thief of Sanity. That does make me want to just play Hydroid Crisis here. Which I'm going to do. Presumably they have removal for Hydroid Crisis, and if they do, then maybe they don't have removal for Ilharg the next turn, and I can then attack with Ilharg and put an Agent of Treachery and steal Thief of Sanity. That's kind of my long-term outlook for the next couple of turns. I think I think Ther Theros comes to Arena on the 16th of January, I think. I think I saw that note. But I'm not not 100% on that. All right, Google also says the 16th. Well, Google Google is smarter than me. So that's a good sign that it comes on the 16th.
highest ghost form. So whenever Thief of Sanity dies, return it to the battlefield under your control. Oh, so Kaya's ghost form just just falls off because it has to be a chanting a creature or planeswalker you control. So that just falls off. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, that's that's basically what I did. Edder is I just um, took the Grixis deck that we played yesterday. And put in not put in some kick spells. Yeah, Josu Vess. Um, Fight with Fire. And I could just cast Agent of Treachery. And the dragon. Whatever the name of that dragon is. Whatever that dragon is with Kicker, I have that, some of those in the four mana slot. Okay, so we were basically just kind of scared of Thief of Sanity from the things that we saw. So we could play Lava Coil for Thief. I'm not even that scared of Thief. We have a Boreal Grazer too. Nah, not scared of nothing. Let's go. Run it back. <laughs> yeah, Agent is such a bully. And it's a big bully. This game would be very good if we had blue mana. I'm pretty confident with our 28 land deck that we can draw some more lands. So we'll keep the spells. Maybe that's also reason to keep the... The two land hand. Man, my opponent is just insane. All these mascots. I feel like I was supposed to grab the red source to have a second red source in play, but you know, doing this lets me play a Boreal Grazer. Hey, 
welcome back there, Lifer, for the 13th month. So many months. Thank you so much. Hey, Sir Tails. Doing great. Am I supposed to always just play Nessa? Maybe. Playing Nissa, I, I couldn't do anything else but play Nissa. This, you know, like ramped plus we get the Risen Reef trigger. I think Forest is more valuable than Temple of Mystery. We still have two other blue sources. I guess I'm supposed to just play the Great Henge there. I was kind of like already, already playing the Scryland in, in my mind. I'm not. Don't think it's really gonna matter. But. Yeah, I, I think we are playing against a a precon deck. Ilharg with the Great Henge is really cool though. Because you put the creature into play off of Ilharg, and it gets a counter. That's really cool. Yeah, because like Ilharg, you know, you attack, you put the creature in, it gets the counter. Hmm. Maybe I need more Great Henge plus. Alright, tap it down. Uh, sorry, like Great Henge plus Charming Prince. Flicker, flicker creatures. That sounds pretty cool. Obviously, this is just garbage time. So All right, what do you know? Ah, uh, thanks Evil. Thank you.
Yeah, not not in this deck. I was just saying that in general, we would need to get some more Charming Prince plus the Great Henge in my life. Especially if you have two Charming Princes, you can just keep on having the Charming Princes exile each other, and you just keep on drawing more cards. Does that sound sweet? Yeah, we do have a four runners in here. We're one sub goal away from our next 12 hour stream. But so thinking we're probably gonna do it either Sunday or Monday. We got our sub battle stream tomorrow. Hey Joko, good afternoon. Pay two life to gain three. I feel like we have enough five mana cards in hand. We already have like a Hellkite and another Hellkite and then Hydro Crisis that we're going to cost for more. I don't know if we need the, the Nissa. Kind of want to just play a land next turn. Oh, that's always scary. That's such a good combo, Cranko plus Samet Sprint. That's such a good combo. Yep, that's a good combo. That's a good combo. All right, gonna need these flame sweeps for sure. <laughs> How green is the tie today? It's pretty black. It even says little black tie on like the thing on the inside that you definitely can't see and it's upside down for you, but it says little black tie. <laughs> Um, anyway, let's see. We're going to take out Endrays. We want to take out just some of our top ends. What if I take out Risen Reef? I could probably take out Risen Reef. It's not like the 1-1 one, one does too much in combat. And obviously it dies to my flame sweep that I'm bringing in. And then Agent of Treachery. Kind of like having the one Agent of Treachery in here. Maybe a boar. Let's take out a boar. Hey, Kitty Dexterity gifting out a sub. We got uh, D Evil, maybe Dr. Evil. Getting this up. Um, our third sub of the day. 
So the problem with keeping this is that we play both of our lands on turn one. So turn two, if we don't draw a land, we're we're just kind of stuck. And still even turn three, we, if we don't draw lands, we're just stuck. This is basically the same thing, but this is a six card hand instead of seven. So I'd, Scrying would put me down to five, but or, or like Mulligan again would put me down to five. But we have the Beanstalk Giant, which helps, and we have the Temple, which also helps. I guess we need two red sources to cast Hellkite. We'll just put Hellkite down to the bottom, even though I do like Hellkite quite a bit. Hey, hatred. I'm having a very, I am having a very good holiday season. Thank you. Uh, the last song was "The Devil Within." By the by, digital daggers. All right, so they're going to be using Rimrock Knight here. Do I want to make that trade? Do I want them to Rimrock Knight? This wasn't good. Did not get that extra land. Extra land. I'm not going to block because blocking is pretty risky, but I want to get rid of a Fervent Champion. So that thing basically attacks for three, if you think about it, because one of those out there is just attacks for one, two of them attack for four. So getting rid of one of the creatures means that's an extra three damage. <laughs> Thanks, Janini. Uh, as far as I know, you can, Radical Guru. Fury 8. That card's good. Oh, Rimrock can't block. I should have attacked for three. Could be putting them down to 11. Where's our flame sweeps? <laughs> yeah, the new spoil card. Yeah, we were talking about that one in the in the Discord channel today. Um, that one looks pretty interesting.
My opponent is doing a very good job of making Krenko, of maximizing Krenko, especially with. I don't really know how I'm winning this. I mean, we need to draw a flame sweep. Hand was just too awkward there after. I mean, I guess I could have gone down to five. I guess I could have mulliganed to five. Fervent champion with all those pump effects, though. If you're if your life, you're just trying to block. You're not playing removal. You know, being a first strike creature with all those pump effects. That looks pretty good. The problem is, is against removal, all those pump effects are pretty poor. But we're not playing removal, so it looks good against us. Our 28 land deck it just can't get lands. This is better. I think we just take it. Oh, Lamb. Hey, GG's. Yeah, Fervent Champion with a bunch of pump spells looks good. And, and yeah, I took very good advantage of Krenko there. Um, the new Green Saga. We'll, we'll have to really see how important putting cards into your graveyard are. It could be a, a good enabler. It's the kind of card that, on its own, it's not very powerful. The new Saga. And it, on its own, it doesn't look like it is good enough to really see play, but it could be a good enabler for other cards. Hydro Crisis is pretty good, too. So right now, these are, I guess, the Temple. So we'd have 8, 9, untapping. We'd have 11 mana. Yeah, I kind of want to take the Risen Reef, but I guess... I guess we're supposed to take the Crisis. Yeah, I mean, I I like Risen Reef more with having the other Risen Reefs. Like, just as... As you know, like a, a card, but... Crisis is just too good. Cinder, you had to say something. So I just have to hit a land. That's a good land. To make it worth it. Two, four, six, eight, nine. 
If I do eight, we could, you know, play a grazer if we draw a grazer, but there's only two other grazers in the deck. Well, darn. We drew a grazer. Could have gone grazer mountain. I guess I'd rather we have grazer and mountain in play and this be an eight, eight. Then it'd be a nine, nine, but oh well. One mana short of Casualties of War. Boo. Alright, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12. We could do Crisis for 10. We just have this be a setup turn. I guess if I would have shocked there, I could have played the Beanstalk Giant also. That's okay. I don't really want any of these forests vulnerable, basically. So yeah, could have played the Beanstalk Giant, could have held up Hellkite activation. It's not that important either. We're gonna have enough mana, enough green. The land will help us find a way. Hey, QQ. All right, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This thing costs 8 plus 5 is 13. I didn't know if this is a good attack with Hellkite or Endray's Forerunners. I didn't know, like, is this even a good attack? I guess it's not. I guess I should have played Beanstalk Giant. Yeah, I, man, I am messing this game up. Because the Corvold's an 8 8 right now. So if I attack with these, they get to eat one.
Hey, what's up, Moose? Thanks again, the Twitch Prime sub in and also Reptar. Thank you so much, y'all. We do 12 damage. All right, we're going to sacrifice either the Forerunners or the Hellkite to do 12 damage. Yeah, I should have just played the Beanstalk Giants. So that's 22 mana, 23, 24. How big of a crisis do we really need to make? 20. Like 20 is pretty big. All right, so we'll play the Great Henge. <laughs> They're, of course, drawing millions of cards over here with the Corvold. Not play Risen Reef and Ilharg. Oh, I have a land drop left. Never mind. Yes, I would like that card, please. So Ravager Worm will be haste, Hellkite will be haste. Oh, come on. They just randomly have claimed the Firstborn? That's annoying. Well, got punished for not playing the Beanstalk Giant first and playing the Endrace Forerunners at the wrong time. So I would have played the Beanstalk Giant first, then Endrace Forerunners would have ended that the next turn with the Giant having Trample. Probably. I don't know. Would have dealt a lot more damage. 
All right. I guess I need a sequence better. Yes, they had lethal. They attack with the two creatures in the air. I can block... My Arboreal Grazer can block the 12-12. I take 20, go down to 4, and then the Mayhem Devil and the Cauldron Familiars kill me. I want to play Disdainful Stroke because we saw Masker Girl massacre my board and Corval to draw all the cards. So I want to play Disdainful Stroke. I also want to play Lava Coil because of Mayhem Devil. But I don't know how many actual cards I want. Like that's that's three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven cards. I can probably just cut Grazer. Blocking doesn't really matter. I don't know what else to cut, though. I don't know, three seconds, I gotta cut something. I just cut a land. All right, Scry, look for land. Cool. So we still got 27 in here, so I think we're, we'll still be fine. I can play Hydra, you know, a 2-2 two -two Hydra Crisis to try to draw cards, and... That is not a card I want to draw right now. Do not want to draw an 8-drop, necessarily. That's a good card. Hmm. Normally I would get rid of the Trail of Crumbs. Yeah, I'm still just getting rid of Trail of Crumbs. They got two cards. Hopefully we can beat two, the two cards. Well, hopefully we draw lands also, and not a nine drop. <laughs> We're drawing an eight drop and a nine drop. There we go. Yeah, normally I get rid of Trail of Crumbs. And today will be no exception. <laughs> Alright, come on. Let's draw this land. Let's get to Ravager Worm. Let's eat this castle. We get to blow up lands that have activated abilities that are not mana abilities. This castle has an activated ability that's not a mana ability. Um, 7-7? Seven, seven? Seven, seven. I 
<laughs> yeah, drawing our lands one crisis at a time. Ouch. Could shock play Beanstalk Giant, another 7 7. But I like destroying their only black source. Chomp. That's such a good animation. Aggressive. Ugh, the tap land. The dreaded tap land. All right, so if I play Ravager Worm, haste, attack, we have 8, 11, 13 damage. They're at 8. They can't just sack their food. Pretty sure we just win, right? Yay. Hey, Scario. So they can make seven sevens? I do like Return to Nature a whole lot more than Thrashing Brontodon. I think Thrashing Brontodon is the most overrated sideboard card in Standard. So we saw there, that was really clutch destroying that that uh, Trailer Crumbs for two mana, letting us Lava Coil also, instead of spending four mana like Brontodon. It's just too much mana. I know you get the versatility that it's a 3-4 sometimes, but I want my card to destroy their Artifact or Enchantment pretty important thanks folks thank you yeah you can use return to nature on cauldron familiar yeah you can exile cauldron familiar from the graveyard yep absolutely Like Bronto better versus Embercleave. Yeah, I can understand that because you don't really want to play Return to Nature against like Rakdos Aggro, but it's good to have Brontodon against Embercleave. I, I can understand that. This this matchup is just Return is just too important. I think. Are they playing something that needs a disdainful stroke? Probably not. My current favorite deck. Um I don't really have I don't really have one right now. But Absent it could be Absent here or, or Mono Green Midrange as far as standard is concerned. Probably one of those two decks. Like these Yeah. I'm excited to play those two decks today.
I wish I had a breeding pool where I could play Nyssa, untap, breeding pool, hold up Disdainful Stroke. Don't want them to play Massacre Girl. Please don't. Ugh. Just wait a turn before you play that card. Awkward still. I, I was hoping we were going to draw a land here to be able to have another one, but. It's possible they don't kill Nissa, though. And then we get to ultimate Nissa in a couple of turns. So my thinking here, like, it's kind of, it could be a waste of a Great Henge, but my thinking here is if they use Brontodon, to blow up the Great Henge, then they wouldn't have, the like, it'd be harder for them to attack and kill Nyssa, and it'd be easier for me to ultimate. I don't know, that could just be a mistake by me, but... I guess it's just really worth it to wait for on a turn for Krasis. We'll just wait. Hey, Dank Dank. No, you're, you're, no, thank you. Oh, yeah, next turn. Well, so we have to be worried about that lame card they played last time, whatever that name of that card is. Claim the Firstborn. <clears throat> so we have eight, uh, let's see, four, seven, ten. So that's 20 mana. Let's just do this for like 10. Now, because like last time I did the Hydro Crisis for 20, game one, and then they. Then they use Claim the Firstborn. So this time we're not going to. Not going to do that. <laughs> Only 10. Feels bad, man. <laughs> yeah. 
Yep, gotta gotta have the risky plays. Yeah, I should have gone 50-50 graces. I am glad that we're on the play with this hand more than being on the draw with this hand. I'm not, I'm not sure, Chan. Um, so there's like a good cheap deck. I do like mono blue. I do think mono blue is still underrated. Domri's Ambush? Whenever I kept the second crisis with the hand that we had, it, it was basically under the presumption that I was going to have to use a crisis on this turn, whether we, if we hit a land with the Risen Reef, you know, it could be a 3-3, three, three. you know, like, basically with having the two Krasi, I knew that I was going to have to be using one as a small crisis, and that's okay. If I go Nissa, untap a land, you know they they can pretty easily kill my land. Most likely, if they kill the kill the land, then kill Nissa. All right, if it's Embercleave, I would rather block Paradise Druid. If they have another Rimrock Knight, I'd rather block Rimrock Knight. If it is Embercleave, it's not that big of a deal. Then I'm blocking Rimrock Knight. I basically don't want them just to be able to use a Rimrock Knight to kill Ilharg on Paradise Druid. Doesn't get faced. Basically, Grazer is just it's just efficient toughness. Mm. Yeah, good hands. GG. That's a good hand. Forerunners is definitely out of here. I 
if I played a couple negates. A lot of, you know, Domri's ambushes. A lot of spells. And obviously negating a number cleave would be really nice. I'm not sure if we'll have the time to set that up. Hey, Matthew. But we have we have Ilharg and Agent of Treachery. We do have those two together. It was just Grazer was just a third land. Cause again, like, imagine how this hand's gonna play out. We play great like we keep like you may think like, oh man, we're ramping, but we're really not ramping. Because we just play a turn one grazer, we play the stomping ground. Turn two, if we don't draw a land, we would have just played the stomping ground anyway, and we just don't even ramp, and we just we're just playing O threes. Pretty sure Gruel can beat O threes when you're not ramping. This this doesn't ramp. This is definitely keep. This is definitely keeping all the lands. Um. Yeah, we're getting so many two land hands in our deck that's half half lands. Just all over. Okay. Can definitely do some work. As long as they don't kill Hellkite. Okay.
So the problem with playing Nissa, we get a 3-3 blocker, but then we don't get to activate Hellkite twice. We only get to activate Hellkite once. Right now we can activate Hellkite twice. So I can block their Hellkite and kill their Pelt Collector. I guess we're just dead though. I guess we're just dead. Yeah, there's no way to activate because because we need two red. There's no way to activate this twice. Power surges through these lands. Behold, nature's true power. We gotta get this blocker, but still we're just pretty dead. And just another awesome hand. When Gruul curves out like this, it's tough to beat. And just like the person said before, this this is a matchup where Bronzedon is better than... Bronzedon would be looking better here. So this is five, six damage coming in. I mean, they have hex proof, it doesn't really matter. I don't think I really need to activate Hellkite and cast Return to Nature. The land for we'll be able to do one or the other. It's been a great time for this to be negate. All right, so I played against a couple, a couple aggro opponents that just had. Very strong hands, and we couldn't stabilize. That's where the ramp deck's going to struggle. We, we can't beat aggro's best hands. Um, and that's that's just, you know, like, that's just how it is with a ramp deck like this. Uh, we, we faced two, you know, like Mono Red and then Gruul that had, you know, like, some of their best hands, and we're not going to be fast enough to beat them. Um, as far as the deck, I really liked the Beanstalk Giants. I, I liked getting the extra lands with them. Oh, they looked pretty strong. Um, honestly, Beanstalk Giants may be better than Risen Reef. That's certainly possible. That uh, It could be that Risen Reef Leafkin Druid is the weakness of the deck. That if you don't play Risen Reef, you don't have to play Leafkin Druid. And you can play Paradise Druid, which is a lot better because it, it blocks better. It ha it um, you know has hex proof, so they can't just kill it right away. 
And of course it adds the, all the different colors of mana, which could be really nice, you know, like, um, would have made it easier to be activating Hellkite if we had Paradise Druids kind of thing. Like maybe, maybe Beanstalk Giants, the, the card that can replace Risen Reef where you're, where you're still ramping. Because the thing, well, Risen Reef's awesome when you have more elementals, but the only other elemental in this deck is Leaf Kindred. You know, like with, so like with this build, you're not ramping into other elementals. And Leaf Kindred and Risen Reef just aren't strong enough against aggro. You still want to ramp, but you want to have cards that are going to be better against aggro. Beanstalk Giant always gets you a land. I don't know. It's just something to think about. Um... Besides that, I think Endray's Forerunners is just too... I think it's kind of unnecessary. I think like the games like where we play Endray's Forerunners, you're already doing really good. Because like the games that, that this deck loses are not games that that this card matters. Like I, I'd rather have a second Agent of Treachery, basically. I think Agent of Treachery is just much much more impactful. And you, you'll win more games with Agent of Treachery than you will with Endray's Forerunners. Um, you know, if we could have another agent, you know, just have two agent treacheries where you have a, a better chance of stealing, you know, like a Hellkite there or the Cranko earlier or, or just things like that. Agent Treachery plays better defense, taking their best threat. Um, um, Grazer is okay. The, the only, like, Grazer is good when you have four plus lands in hand it's just you can't grazer is just not not good with two landers and we just kept on having grazer with two landers and that's not that's not a recipe for success but grazer is okay yeah growth spiral yeah growth spiral is a, a pretty easy one to have in here I like Bond of Flourishing, but there's a good chance Growth Spiral is better, as long as you can cast Growth Spiral. Um, but yeah, yeah, Love Struck Beast gives you, yeah, that's a really big creature to play some defense with for the three, for the three mana slots. The thing is, if you don't play Risen Reef, you could just play Flame Sweeps in the main deck. Like, what if this was just four Beanstalk Giants and two Flame Sweeps? And then I guess you keep Leafkin Druid because then because of Flame Sweep. Maybe like that's the thing is you can have main deck Flame Sweeps against Aggro. Maybe that's what you want to be doing. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think Edra's Four Runners helps you beat Cat Oven. We have Hydrocrasis and Skargon Hellkite. You don't need Endre's Forerunners. You just go over them in the air. Um, and if you do, if you do take out Risen, you know, if you play less creatures, like if you if you're not going to play Grazer or Risen Reef, like that's that's going to make Endre's Forerunners worse, also. Those are all just kind of things to think about. I'm not saying like those are those would absolutely make the deck better. I'm not sure. It's just figuring out how this deck beats the aggro decks with their best draws is what's going to bring it to the next level. Hey keeper, thanks for the tier one sub there. All right, but that's that's what we got. Um, Ilharg was was uh, Ilharg was pretty good. Ravager Worm was awesome. Um, Agent of Treachery is just incredible, of course. Skargon Hellkite looked pretty good. Um, yeah, there we go. <clears throat> All right, so those of y'all watching on YouTube, I uh, hope you hit that like button over there, and of course, uh, leave some comments. Hope you do both of those. Um, but uh, thank you so much for watching some Teamer Ramp, and I'll see you for the next video.